In my previous life, I worked as a professional educator. That's the term that's used when you're a teacher in the corporate world. As a professional educator, I absolutely loved presenting and teaching people and acquire, inquiring new information and sharing that information. It just rocked my world and I had fire in my belly for that. What I didn't have fire in my belly for was sitting in corporate meetings, taking minutes or having minutes taken and following procedure of meeting protocol and working on the technology behind the scenes to fill out expense reports and work on committees. That was killing my soul. One morning, one day, I had traveled across one time zone too many, across Canada for over a decade, and I didn't have another trip, and I didn't have another presentation inside me. I went to my knees with fatigue and my soul empty. I couldn't travel and share any longer, which was amazing because I love to share. The travel was over. I was done, no more traveling, no more presentations. I basically stayed in silence with the loving support of my husband for a year and a half. I started to write in a journal, which I didn't think journal writing was me. I didn't think that I would do something like that. I actually started to write every single day and reflect and spend time finding out what I really wanted, who I am, and what was my heart really saying. When I was in that year and a half of silence and reflection and listening to a lot of personal growth, sharing with some very caring people who understood, I realized that I had fears about going back to an artistic life that I had started in the mid 90s. And the difference is, is I owned that I was an artist two years into the mid 90s. It took two years of struggle to even admit that I was an artist, but here's the new part. Could I be brave enough and overcome my fears to actually choose art and choose my creativity and imagination as the way of making a very abundant living? That was what my next story and my next adventure was all about. And it wasn't easy. I had a lot of fears to face. I was not brought up being told that I was an artist from birth, like my husband, who knew no other way. He just knew he was an artist. His parents told him that. I was told after grade five to put everything away in a closet because I would never make a living doing that. I had to be more serious and bring up my grades and stop drawing and painting. I put my dreams away when I was in grade six. I had a male teacher, he was strict, it was not about art and like it had been prior. I put those dreams away for a number of different family reasons and the messages I received from my family and I didn't bring them out until I was 47 years old where I realized that the music in me was going to die if I didn't stop and I didn't do something about finding out if I was an artist. I didn't even know if I could do anything. I gave away my knitting assignments in home ec when, when I was in high school to somebody else. I didn't do any craft, any art of any kind, and now I wanted to stop everything and find out. I was terrified. My husband sat me in the window seat and gave me, you know that graph paper, that tiny, not the big one inch, but the slightly small? He gave it to me and showed me how to draw a rabbit with three perspective circles and then a little tail and ears. And I remember sitting in the window seat of our one room cabin where we lived at the time and crying as I drew those circles because I felt all that that I put away when I went into grade six that was in that closet, which meant my soul and my spirit was in that closet, not just my art projects, as I drew every round circle of that bunny and cried my eyes out 
because I knew I couldn't go back and I had to find out. Now I'm using my talents and skills as an artist and I'm using my amazing imagination to make a living with joy, with soul, and without the, and the music is not dying inside of me anymore. The way I'm using my imagination and my artistic skills now is I'm offering workshops and I'm creating what I call glass butterfly pendants called You Can Fly because I'm flying and I'm celebrating how far women have come in their life and all the possibilities to come because I've gone from a caterpillar to a butterfly and I'm celebrating other women doing the same thing. Now I'm creating my own art and I'm sharing my teaching skills and my artistic skills by offering workshops. People that are taking my workshops are saying that they're amazed at how easy and how much fun they had and how creative they were when they didn't think they could be. I'm willing to help you share and explore. So if you're interested in learning more, just go to shardsglass.com, my website, or my Facebook page, Shards Glass Studio, and I'll answer any questions that you have, and you can learn more about my workshops and take any variety of them and just enjoy yourself.